Number five, war is over. A cute little pigeon carries chess moves from one side of an anonymous battlefield to another, and then there's a skirmish, and good lord, it turns out the two guys on either side have to fight to the death. But guess what? War is over. Everyone stops fighting. The more I think about war is over, the more I hate it. What is the message here? War is bad, and if we just stopped doing it, things would be good? It's such a brutally reductive, patronizing idea. Surely there must be more to it. Oh, the message is literally written on some title cards at the end. War is over. If you want it. That's not how war works. Even watching this short in a vacuum, it's very clear that these soldiers are not excited by the war at all. They're terrified. Maybe if they were stoked to kill each other at first and then realized killing was bad and not fun, this would make a bit more sense. I mean, the idea would still be gross and wrongheaded, but it wouldn't be directly contradicting itself. War is Over reminds me of two other really bad shorts. There's the infamous Pepsi protest commercial, again, rich person explains how war is over if everyone on the battlefield could just stop warring and just enjoy a nice Pepsi. And of course, there's this other John Lennon music video. Imagine there's no heaven. For some reason, his music really lends itself to rich people oversimplifying a problem and coming off like tone-deaf asshats. Maybe this short is just meant for babies? But then there's all this scary, violent imagery, so I, I don't know. I'm gonna say this is the only straight-up bad short of the five nominees this year. Number four, our uniform. In the genre of short films animated entirely on clothing, this is unmatched. And I don't mean that in a backhanded way. This short really uses its canvases to the fullest extent possible, weaving in and out of buttons and measuring tape and playing within 3D perspectives that ruffled clothing naturally creates. It's a personal memoir of repression that also works as a broader feminist statement, and it's not a second too long. When it was over, I thought, this would be a great short to show to kids if it wasn't for all that nudity. And then I was like, wait a second, North Americans, myself included, also have problematic attitudes towards clothing and nudity. We innately sexualize naked bodies and think of all that stuff as some kind of adults only concept, so everyone's got some work to do, clothing wise. Number three, pachyderm. Another deeply felt memoir. This one has a mysterious shape that only reveals itself in the final minutes. And I was having a bit of trouble sinking my mind teeth into this one right up until it got there. But the payoff is so worth those minutes of ambiguity and discomfort. The ending just snaps back onto the rest of the short beautifully. And it's so good, I don't want to ruin it for you. The watercolory animation evokes these blurry, half-forgotten memories. I've got to see this one again, knowing where it's all going. Number two, Letter to a Pig. This is the front runner for the Oscar, and I can absolutely see why. Much like The Zone of Interest, one of my favorites of the year, it's a very fresh perspective on the Holocaust, this time through the eyes of high school students multiple generations into the future. It's about how we're all capable of writing off someone else's experience if we haven't seen it through our own eyes. And it's about how culture generally regards pigs as devoid of dignity and unworthy of our respect, and the evil philosophies that led to the Holocaust are wrapped up right inside those attitudes. I feel like there might be a food industry metaphor in there as well. The animation here is pretty singular. Again, we're in subconscious memory territory. Everything has a kind of unpredictable shape and texture. It's muddy, it's silky, it's a little live action even. If this wins, it's well deserved, but it's not my personal number one. Number one? 95 senses. When this one started, I was nervous. It seemed like one of those meaningless commercial montages where they just kind of throw a bunch of random, relatable ideas together, like, we all have memories. Memories of hugs and bananas and game shows, etc. And then just by virtue of being a collection of stuff that you're familiar with, it has to have some kind of profound impact on you. 
But as 95 Senses unfolds, it gets a lot more specific. Five segments, five very different animation teams and styles. I was blown away by just how densely packed this 14-minute Marvel truly is. How deep a short can really be. It's a comedy, a tragedy, it's whimsical, it's deeply upsetting. It's about the prison system, and death, and dreams, and it's a whole life story. I should also mention, this is Tim Blake Nelson at his Tim Blake nelson -iest. If that doesn't put this over the edge, I don't know what could. And if I had a vote, I would vote for 95 Senses. Thanks for journeying with me through the nominees for Best Animated Short. This is a really strong batch. There have been some questionable and downright dank winners in the last couple of years, but not this time. Unless War is Over wins. Big shout out to the Animation Showcase. It's a streaming platform through which you can watch all of these shorts and more. You just need an IMDb page or some proof that you're connected to the industry. If you have that, check it out. I'm Nikki P. I have a degree in film. Bye for now.